welcome back to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys know who Liv Loves Her Makeup is. I have been obsessed with our channel for months now and this video was inspired by her because she loves to call brands out on their shit and I have been keeping a list on my phone that I recently discovered and I was like, why haven't I made this video yet? I really need to make this video. So the list is pretty long. Hang in there if you guys wanna hear about brands that I am breaking up with. Okay, so if you guys disagree with me, I would love to have a conversation with you in the comments down below. So feel free to comment because your girl can take it. I'm really, really excited to hear your thoughts on all of these brands. But I'm going to give you my take on why I have broken up with these brands. We are no longer Facebook official. It is, you know, we're like in divorce right now. It is that bad. So the first brand I want to talk about is, of course, going to be no surprise to anyone. It is Too Faced Cosmetics. Now, Too Faced and I go way back. If you go look at some of my videos, I used to buy their palettes. I bought their peanut butter and jelly palette, peanut butter and honey palette. There was a lot of palettes that I bought from them back in the day. I have since stopped buying their products, um, but every once in a while I will pick up something from Too Faced just to try it out and basically in my mind knowing that it's shit but I'll buy it anyway just to give them a chance like you know it's like that relationship where you don't want to let go but you like try to give them a chance and then you like remember you're a YouTuber so you need to like try things and not just disregard things you know so yeah me and Too Faced are officially done I can't with their quality their quality is so poor their swatches their pigmentation that whole natural eye palette thing they did was a disaster the whole twitter battle with jeffree star that was so unnecessary and then that whole nikki tutorials palette like as soon as i saw that palette i literally like went back in time to when they did that vegas nay collab and it, all their palettes are similar like if you line up all their palettes, it's basically like a pop of purple or a pop of teal and they expect us to buy these palettes and they're definitely not cheap. They're always in like the 40 to 45 to 50 dollar range and then it's just chaos. Like I can't handle it. And then like all of those chocolate bar palettes, like people talk about how much they love them and I just don't get it. I used to own the chocolate bar, the first palette. I returned it. I just didn't see what the hype was. I did buy the peach palette. I hated the colors on that. I knew even before I bought it that I would hate it, but I was like, you know, let's give them a chance. Let's just, let's just try it out and see. And I hated it. I will link all those videos in the description box, but I have definitely tried a lot of different Too Faced products. And I must say, I don't think there's anything Too Faced in my makeup collection anymore. So we're definitely on a break. We'll see if they make a comeback. Right now, guys, the weather predictions are not looking good for Too Faced with their holiday teases and all that stuff. I'm just, I just can't. Like that new white chocolate bar palette looks like shit. Like I just... I just can't with them. Next brand I want to talk about is Benefit Cosmetics. Now, I have not bought anything for Benefit in a hot minute. Uh, the one thing I do like from them that I will give them props for is the Roller Lash Mascara. That too, I had a love-hate relationship with. I hated it when I first bought it. I thought it was completely overhyped. But recently, I have picked it back up and I do really like it. I think it definitely separates my lashes really well. It doesn't do a whole lot of lengthening, but I just like how it makes my lashes look. So that is one of their redeeming products. But overall, I just don't like their products. I think their box blushes are shitty. Like, I don't know why people buy them. I think they're so stupid. And yeah, I just, I don't like their stuff i bought one of their box sets from holiday and the quality on that palette sucked and this was like just when i was getting into makeup so i didn't know better to return it so i kept it and i never used it i literally gave it away because it was literally the shittiest purchase of my existence so because of many of those reasons i just really hate benefit and then that little clicky eyeliner pencil they did um it was the their real eyeliner but it was like a gel but it was in a pen it was such a fucking disaster i just hate there's not one benefit product that i like and then like the hula bronzer i own that and i always am shocked when people my skin tone are darker use hula like i just don't understand how that's your contouring shade i prefer for bronzer i prefer nars casino i 
I love the Kat Von D shade and light palette, but Hoola is like the last thing I pick up when I think of contouring. I definitely think it's more suitable for lighter skin tones, but yeah, I just, I just despise Benefit. I hate their packaging. Everything is so like cartoony and I get that that's their brand but it's just not for me. I just think their brand is so immature. <clears throat> I hate it. I hate it so much. Another brand I really, I'm just not gonna purchase from is the Bomb Cosmetics. I picked up some of their luminizers, which I think are okay. Mary Luminizer was definitely like a big deal when highlights were just like a thing. Uh, like two years ago, Mary Luminizer was a hot item and now nobody talks about Mary Luminizer. And there's reasons. It's because it's not that great of a highlighter. It, it made a splash because it was probably one of the first ones that ever came out. But overall, their palettes, I don't like their mattes. I have one of the Matrimony palettes. I think it was the first one and the colors are awful. Everything just looks so muddy with their stuff. I just, ooh, I just don't like their stuff. And they definitely seem like they're geared more towards Caucasian women, which is totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. But everything I've tried from them has been 100% disappointing. Their blushes are... They're okay, they're not that great, definitely not for that price, and I just, and they're so hard to find too. Um, I know they're carried at Kohl's now if you're interested in checking out any of their products, but I just have no desire to try any more things from the Bomb Cosmetics. We are broken up, dude, we are done. Okay, the next brand I'm breaking up with is Tarte Cosmetics, and I have a decent amount of stuff from Tarte Cosmetics because honestly they have the most insane sales. Like their website is constantly on sale. I always tell my friends don't ever buy anything full price on Tarte.com on tart because you will be able to get a coupon or they'll have some kind of sale. They'll have a Sunday sale. They'll have a six hour sale. They'll have it's your grandma's neighbor's birthday sale. You know they, they always have a sale. Don't ever buy anything full price from them. The only catch is you can't return shit if you buy it off their website, which is probably why they have all the sales. But I have bought a few things from them that just haven't worked out recently and I just can't be fucking bothered. The Aqua Luminous Rainforest Under the Rainforest foundation sucked. And then the concealer that went with that, I hated that too. I will pop pictures because I'm making up names of these products. I do have them in my collection still, but I just don't like that brand. The Tarte Shape Tape is pretty good, but I just recently tried out the NARS concealer, the pot concealer, and that thing is amazing. I love the Urban Decay Naked Skin concealers. I just tried the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. That's what I'm actually wearing today, which is, and that's only $6. And Tarte Shape Tape is so hard to find. So just keep in mind, there's other stuff out there. I, mm, they just, their palettes suck. I have the Tarte In Bloom palette. It literally sucks. Am I still gonna buy that new bronzy colored palette? I probably will, but I always stay away from their holiday collections. The only thing during holiday that I pick up is usually their blush palette. That's usually a really good deal, but I have picked up four of those now and I'm like, I don't need any more blushes. I don't need any more Tarte blushes. I never remember to wear them because I'm constantly trying new products. So those are just chilling in my makeup collection, gathering dust. And yeah, I'm just not a fan of Tarte. I, I can never get the right foundation with them. I recently tried a bunch of their foundations. I tried that aqua one. I tried the one that's supposed to be like super long wearing, the maracuja one. I tried the hydrogel one, the one that comes in the pot. I really wanted to try their foundation stick, but I swatched it in store and it just, mm, like I have the hourglass foundation stick and that was so creamy and you could just tell it's like really, really good coverage. So I was like, you know what Tarte? Just get it together, like I just can't. And then their whole brand trip situation, like uh, with like all the exotic destinations, like nobody, I just, I just don't get it. Like I'm so happy for all the influencers that get to go on these awesome trips, but me as a consumer, like I go to work all day, I come home, I don't wanna see like 18 hot girls like chilling on a beach while I'm working my ass off, okay? Like I know those people work their ass off, but there's nothing appealing to me about watching other people having fun and not having fun with them. If you guys wanna see a really good video about brand chirps, definitely watch Makeup Struggles. She is 
hilarious. She has a really good video about brand trips, but I have to agree with all these other YouTubers that talk about brand trips. It's like, it's so overdone. I literally stop watching people's Snapchats and Instagram stories when I know they're on a brand trip because I'm like, I don't want you to market anything to me like that. I, I just don't. Just put it on trend mode. Let me know when it's coming out and I will decide if I want to buy it. You don't have to put it on a deserted island. You know, I would rather brands do things that they give back to their customers. Like all that money, give something back to your customers, do giveaways, do charity work. I want to see these YouTubers like volunteering. I want them to make videos with drones about volunteering, bad stuff that's happening in the world. Use that brand to bring light to things that are more important than these girls partying and getting drunk and like it's just it's a lot so that is my whole take on Tarte Cosmetics. I feel like I could make a whole video just based on that but those are my opinions and so me and Tarte we are on a break right now okay. Next brand I want to talk about is definitely another love-hate relationship. It is Lorac Cosmetics. I still buy stuff from them because they have been launching shit like every every day every day Lorac is like here's a palette here's a palette Beauty and the Beast Pirates of the Caribbean there's gonna be a I don't even know what they could come out with next like a Pinocchio eyeshadow palette inspired by the movie um, I don't know what you know it's crazy they've been doing all these like movie collabs and like the Pirates of the Caribbean palette sucked and like. I was just like, dude, like, why did I even buy this palette? You know, it went back and it's on sale right now because of course nobody fucking wants to buy that shit. It's an awful palette. Um, but yeah, Laura Hawk and I, we have had a long relationship. Like that was a long-term relationship. I used to be obsessed with them. I had all the pro palettes. I still have like the mega pro. I got that one that was impossible to get, but hey, it just restocked in 2017. They bought the mega pro palette back. So if you were holding that, palette you know if you are saving it to like resell it 10 years later it's like it's like Louis Vuitton just went and bought back like every investment piece it's like if Chanel decided to lower the price of the boy bag and now all of a sudden your five thousand dollar purse is worth 200 you know <laughs> it's like thanks a lot Lorac way to take something special that we had and just give it to everyone else you know what I mean but yeah that's not even my problem with Lorac I literally just woke up one day and decided I wasn't in love with it anymore so you know, that happens. It happens in marriages, it happens in relationships, and it happens with makeup. I just decided I didn't like their eyeshadows. Too much dust, too much kick up. Pigmentation was eh, you know? I prefer other eyeshadows, and yeah, I don't know. They do have some decent highlighters, I'll give them that. My husband came home with one of their highlighters one day and I thought it was really stunning. But overall, Lorac to me is just, they're just dead to me, you know? Like, whatever. See ya. Okay, the next brand that is dead to me is Natasha Denona. And you guys definitely know why. I will definitely throw some videos down in the description box of products that I have reviewed from them. I just feel like they're Natasha Denona, like she came out of nowhere. There was all these PR packages going out when her palettes first launched. Everything she does is super expensive and I just don't understand why. Her eyeshadow formula is incredibly messy. Like People are freaking out about the subculture palette. Well, do you want to pay $129 for the subculture palette and have it do the same thing? Because I swear to God, the Natasha Denona eyeshadows, like the fallout is literally like, you're not going to have just eyeshadow on your lid. You're going to have eyeshadow like, like highlighter all over your face. It's a fucking mess. I just hate her eyeshadows so, so much. I haven't even tried anything else from her line and I never will because it's so expensive and I just like refuse to support her. I've heard like that she like had all this beef with a bunch of YouTubers that I really like and I just don't think that's acceptable for a brand to do. So, you know, it's like get the fuck out of here. Like you can't say shit to people. That whole sunset palette, like I bought it and the colors really spoke to me. I'm not saying that she lacks creativity or anything. But I just think her products are overpriced, overhyped and I just want to tell anyone that wishes they had that palette 
really don't feel bad for yourself that you don't have a $129 palette. I urge you not to buy a $129 palette. It's a bad financial decision. It's a bad idea. You don't need it. Watch my video down below where I compared it with a $16 palette, a ColourPop palette, which was amazing. It literally, the ColourPop palette has 12 shades and the Natasha Denona palette had 15 shades. There's no freaking person on earth that can tell me that the Natasha Denona palette was worth $129 when ColourPop duped 12 shades from the damn palette. So do yourself a favor, don't buy anything Natasha Denona. And I personally am never going to buy anything from the Natasha Denona brand. Okay guys, the last brand that I am breaking up with, actually we broke up a long time ago, is Huda Beauty. You guys are gonna fucking throw stones at me in the comments, I just know it, but I just can't with these brands that like come out of nowhere. Well, okay, Huda's been around for a long time. She's a very well established beauty blogger. She was like one of the OG beauty bloggers and she lives in Dubai and seems like she has a great life. You know, I'm super happy for her, but her makeup is so ridiculous. Like her eyeshadow palette is actually all I'm really mad about is the fact that it was $65 and then you had to pay to have it shipped from Dubai to America, which costs like another $10. So basically it was like cheaper to hit the shipping minimum and have the palette and like a lipstick sent to you, but OMG, like her palette sucked. The packaging was cardboard. There, It was an airtight, so like there were these like foiled shades, like it was called the textured rose gold palette or whatever. And those shades aren't gonna like last because the palette's not airtight and the packaging was cheap and I just thought it was so overhyped and every time I see somebody buying that palette I literally cringe because I'm like, why are you wasting your money? And I do have some of her liquid lipsticks too. I picked up a few over the years and I, it's not my favorite formula. I have a friend that loves Huda so, so much. She has like highlighter palette, she's got a ton of her li liquid lipsticks and things like that. But we're so opposite in that way because I'm like, girl, no, like it's not worth the money that you spend, you know, and her, sh and actually my friend had an even worse experience because she lives in Sri Lanka and she ordered the Huda palette, the first one to her home in Sri Lanka and she just had a nightmare with getting it delivered and customs and she emailed like Huda so many times like her customer service never heard back like it was just it was just a hot mess and I just thought the way that was handled and just my experience with the palette I just peace out palette like no you and me you and me Huda we are yeah we're on a break and I feel really bad because you know she's a brown girl and I feel like I should support, you know, brown women because there's not a whole lot of them out there making money in the beauty industry. Or not. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to share with you in my brands I am breaking up with video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or brilliant insights, don't forget to leave them down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of these brands. Also, if you do enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload. I usually upload every other day so you do get a lot of content from me. So I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. And again guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!